What we want to have a look at is the kind of questions, the kinds of areas we can explore in terms of understanding geometry with all of these new fancy polynomial techniques that we've developed. So we understand how polynomials work, we understand what a single, double, triple root are, we understand uh, how do you sum a product of roots when it's not just a quadratic, okay? So what we want to do is say how can we use those techniques not just to solve a problem about, well, tell me what the sum of product of roots are, but how can we use it in an actual application, as it were? Now, I'm deliberately starting with a question that we can do without any such polynomial techniques, because if I gave you this question and didn't tell you what it was about, I think you could work out every part of it. It's a fairly long question, um, but you know enough calculus, you know enough coordinate geometry to do all of these things. But what I'm going to try and show you today is that with the polynomial techniques that we have developed, number one, you've got, you just have another way into these questions. And number two, these other ways often are faster and more flexible. Um, they offer you a way to get into questions that you wouldn't get otherwise. Come on, girls, hurry up. Okay, so let's just quickly have a look at the setup, and then we'll embark on the questions, thinking about how we will use these polynomial techniques we've just developed. You got a straight line, you got a parabola. And we're told that they intersect at a couple of points, right? If, they, if we name those points for intersection A and B, then can we find all of these things that relate to A and B? You'll notice I've put in um, blanks here for the coordinates of A and B. And that's because we can name them, if you think back to yesterday, remember I told you, oh, what if you got a cubic and the polynomial's roots are an AP? Do you remember that? Uh, they go in order, like alpha, alpha plus a difference, alpha plus more differences. So I can call these things whatever I want, but I want to phrase it in a way that makes this easy to solve, okay? How do you normally find points of intersection? Again, going back to what you know before. You would take these two equations, you would solve them simultaneously, okay? Now just have a look at what equations they are. When you solve equation one and equation two simultaneously, what kind of equation do you create? You've got degree one, degree two, using our polynomial language, where you put them together, where you solve simultaneously, what degree will you have? It will be degree 2. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because you basically have 2x equals that, and that's a quadratic, okay? Really good. So being that, we're going to have a quadratic to solve to find these points of intersection. Those two solutions to that quadratic are going to be my points of intersection. In other words, they'll be roots of a quadratic, the two x values, right? And we usually call roots, when you've got a quadratic, you usually call them alpha and beta, okay? So I'm going to call the x coordinates of our points of intersection alpha and beta. Now, I could call the y coordinates something completely random, okay? Like, introduce more letters or something like that. But I don't have to, because I know that if these points of intersection are between this line and this parabola, then at the very least, they must both lie on this line. Does that make sense? If they really are points of intersection, they should be on this line. Well, if the x-coordinate of this is alpha, and it lies on this line, then what's the y-coordinate? It's 2 alpha, very good. Because y is literally 2 times the x-value, which is alpha. In the same way, this is beta and 2 beta. Okay. So you can see this is a better way of saying, rather than like four different unknowns that I've got, I've only got two unknowns now, alpha and beta. And the y's relate to that. Okay. So now, how am I going to start to think about this? Find the midpoint of A, B. Well, without polynomial techniques, I would need to do something like uh, actually find what all these coordinates are, and then I have to use the midpoint formula, and then off I go, okay? But think about this. How would I do this with polynomial techniques? Well, I've got some roots here, right? What kinds of things do we normally do when you see alphas and betas and gammas? What are the, it's a quadratic, what are the two things you can quickly calculate out of a, um, out of a quadratic? You can do the sum and you can do the product, right? Now I'm going to use both of those, but watch what happens if I get the product. If I say, sorry, the sum. If I say the sum, right, alpha plus beta. How is this thing, which I know is very easy to find, how is it useful to me in finding the midpoint? What is the midpoint formula? It's going to be alpha plus beta on 2. That's going to be the x coordinate. And then it's going to be 2 alpha plus 2 beta on 2. That's the y coordinate, right? Uh, hold on a second. 2 alpha 
plus 2 beta on 2. Why am I doing on 2 again? I'm, I'm finding the middle some average G, right? Well, 2 alpha plus 2 beta on 2, isn't that equal to alpha plus beta? So do you see, just by using this sum of roots result, I can go immediately to the y coordinate. No, I don't even need to know what the y coordinates of these things are. I can go straight there, right? Do you remember I mentioned to you before? Like, why do we care about these things? Well, sometimes we want to get these results without having to go through what are alpha and beta in the first place. And this is a perfect example, OK? So now we've got a bit of an idea of how we're going to go through this question. Let's start to solve the thing, OK? You told me, this is part A, you told me to start solving this thing simultaneously. So I get this x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 2x, OK? So the solutions of this thing are alpha and beta, yeah? Uh, let's tidy this up a little bit. So to make it one quadratic, I'm subtracting this from both sides, OK? And from this, this is my quadratic in general form, OK? So I can read off my alpha plus beta here as what? Minus, minus well, actually, minus negative 4. Right? I'm, I'm going to write both negatives because it shows I know where this is coming from. On what? On 1. There it is. Ta-da. Okay. So now I know that alpha plus beta is just equal to 4. Right? So now I know, just right away, I know the y coordinate of the midpoint. Done. Right? So um, MAB is going to be something 4. Yeah? Something four. Okay, so how do I find the other piece? I've got lots of options here, lots and lots of options. I can substitute this into the line AB, right, because it's on AB, right? Um, the only problem with that is I don't know what AB is, at least I don't know it yet, and I, I would have to find that, okay? Is there a simpler way I could do this? Using information I kind of already have? Yeah, do you remember we said before? If I wanted to find the midpoint of AB, it's going to be alpha plus beta on 2. That's the average of the x coordinates, isn't it? So therefore, it's just going to be 2, right? Now think about this. I don't know if it's because you're still waking up, but I said to you, oh, we don't know the equation of AB. Well, you kind of do, don't you? You just haven't, you're just not thinking of it as AB. Let's draw a quick picture. Because I've deliberately sort of held off from drawing a picture on this so that um, you try and push through and, and don't see things that are obvious. Uh, it's going to look roughly like this. There's our parabola. Let's make, uh, use your imagination. There you go. There's our straight line. Okay. So where are A and B on this diagram? Where are they? There's the intersections, right? There's one down the bottom left. And then there's another one at the top right. So even though it wasn't called AB, clearly the line y equals 2x, clearly that line is AB. Does that make sense? Do you see how obvious that is when you have a diagram and how non-obvious that is when you're trying to like, it's just a maze of algebra, okay? So no one ever told you to draw a diagram, but I'm going to encourage you to always do one, even if it's only rough. Like I don't know where these are, but I don't need to. Just got a general idea.